Hey, hey. Okay. I'm just have to check out the studio. It's pretty freaking cool. This is Mary. Hi. From Re- she's, she's from Rear Ear. Yep, Rear Ear is my podcast. She's got a podcast. And she also gets aired sometimes. What radio station are we We're at? We're at RTRFM in Perth recording Ooh. this interview. Yay, so exciting. <laughs> um, where should we put it? Put it on you. Put it on me? Yeah, okay. put it on you. Right. Get the microphone in, so I'm looking. So pretty get it snazzy. nice and close to you, and about about a fist distance away from the mic, and directly facing the mic when you're talking. So you guys are only going to get a sneak preview because we're going to stop at some point because you can't give the whole podcast away, can we? No. It's going to be out in January, February, sometime. So we will continue. Hopefully this isn't blurry. Let me know that it's not blurry. <laughs> I can't get distracted by comments though. Okay, there we go. Cool, that feels good. Now you're going to wear the headphones. Yes, 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 yes. So let's just let's just test your level. So that, um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so yep. I might just turn you up a little bit. So yeah, that's good. I just bring the microphone slightly closer to you. Yep. Okay. Um, and just introduce yourself just so I can get some levels on you now. Hi, my name is EJ Love. That's great. Thank you. So I'm going to start with my introduction and then we'll go from there. Everybody ready? (laughs) It's more ready. (laughs) (laughs) There are just a few professions that remain shrouded in a certain mystique and sex work is one of them because Even if you met someone who readily admitted they were in the industry, I wonder if you'd feel you could unleash your curiosity then and there. Luckily for us, EJ Love, who's been working in the industry for several years, has recently, I'll say that again. Luckily for us, EJ Love, who's been working in the industry for several years, has recently gone public about her work on her own social media sites and is totally chilled talking about her work and the industry. Thank you so much for being here, EJ. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. I'm so excited that I that I get to, to share with you today. Why did you decide to go public? I decided to go public because I'm a very I'm very much a person who believes in vulnerability and I do a lot of sharing on social media and blogging and I was really censoring myself and I was taking bits out of my story, which I thought were actually the really juicy bits. <laughs> and I knew that there was just going to be a point one day where I had to be fully open. And I knew that there was a lot of opportunities for me to fully share my story, such as with you, that I wasn't able to because I was hiding this part of myself. And also because I knew that it would liberate me and I knew that it would help to heal some shame. Not that I feel, you know, I don't feel ashamed about the work. I'm quite proud of it. But I think as a whole, as a message for other people who are hiding anything in their lives, it's really helpful for me to step up and show that if I can share this, if I can come out, then what does it make possible for other people? So in what way did having to hide what you were doing for work kind of make life complicated? So I think a couple of areas of my life really I struggled with was first relationships because um, I probably have... I used to be a bit of a serial data until I got into the industry and eventually it got to a point where I just didn't date at all because I didn't want to have to deal with having to tell a person what I did and not believing that it would be possible for me to have a relationship while I basically slept with other people for a living. And so, and I have had a couple of relationships in the industry which had got, got a little bit messy, but at the same time, there are lots of women in the industry who do have wonderful relationships. So this is just my personal experience so I also have felt that coming out that, you know, there are people out there that do accept it and it might make, make me more available to someone that is going to be accepting and, and supportive of what I do. And the other area was, of course, my, my work, which I talk so much about vulnerability and healing shame. It's a massive part of my message. So it would actually be quite out of integrity for me to, to not share that. I was really lucky in the fact that I told my family, my parents, a few years ago. So for that period that I didn't tell them, I was I, I almost avoided having conversations with them to the point where 
I um, would not talk about work and, and I just kind of avoid or I'd change the subject or, and, and there was this disconnection in our relationship because I was sort of holding this lie. And so once I told them, it, it changed a lot. And how did they respond? Well, <laughs> my mum will love me for this. Um, <laughs> So my mum, who had a lot of pressure on me, you know, when I was a kid, you know, go to school and study hard and go to uni and be a doctor, be a lawyer, that sort of thing. I was a straight A student. And, and when I told her, I was like, oh, I was, I was really scared that she was going to be the one that was, that was, you know, maybe a bit hard on me. And the, the first thing that she said was, do you think we could start a brothel? <laughs> Now, she was kidding. I, th I think she was kidding, but it may have been in the back of her mind. Um, and Because what did you actually <laughs> say? Like, what, what were the, can you remember the words well, that you used? Well, I, I told her the whole story. I thought if I just give her some some backup, like, okay, this is how I got into it. I was a swinger and then this, and, then, and this is, and one day this happened. And I just told her this big story to like <laughs> kind of set the, set the foundations for her. And... So when I told her, she was like, well, you know, we kind of suspected something and we wondered how you were making your money. And she said, you know, you know, no matter what, I'm always going to love you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and yeah, it was amazing. And then I opened up about all this other stuff that, you know, um, that I, you know, I had an eating disorder and things like that before that. And so it just opened up this pathway of, of connection and truth between me and my mom. So it was, yeah, just a really, um, it was just so liberating. I know it's not, not everyone gets to have that, so I'm so lucky. And that, that was a she... taste of what you've allowed yourself in coming out publicly now is that, that sense of liberation but on a much greater scale. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. In your video that you made, yeah. I love the bit where you said, it's amazing how much sex you don't have as a sex worker. What did you mean by that? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It is really like people make these assumptions that, you know, like sex worker means, you know, people might just be coming in and, you know, having sex with you. But most of the time they're really coming to, uh, for intimacy. And that really looks different to different people. Okay. So, you know, people might think intimacy is sex, but to me, intimacy is about, can, make, can be about touch. It can be about connection. It can be about having a conversation that's really vulnerable. So there's all different reasons. And sometimes, like, for an example, you might have someone that books an hour. They might come in and you, you might have sex for 10, 15 minutes. And then you might talk the rest of the time. And, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I can't believe I'm getting paid to, like, talk. <laughs> this is great. Um, and you almost become like a counsellor because people really do op open up to you. So every session is different. You just never know how it's going to flow. And every um, industry worker, it's going to be different. And, you know, depending on what people offer. And I, um, I attract a certain type of clientele, particularly with the work that I do now, which is um, more of a sexual healing, a tantric kind of style work. And so my clients are really coming to heal, to learn, to, um, to explore so yeah so they understand that you're not just an object to have sex with in that case they they recognize that you're actually there to that they are there to learn from you yeah absolutely so but just from the way that i advertise uh clients come with a sense of what i'm i'm offering that that it is a learning experience and it is you know some of them open up about you know, sexual issues they might be having and they want to learn how to heal that. Maybe they want to learn how to last longer or have stronger orgasms, things like that. And, you know, in the past, when I sort of first started out, it very much was, you know, clients were coming for this bond with big tits. And what I always say to people is sometimes clients come for what they want and what they want may look like, you know, of this bond with big tits and, you know, they want to get their rocks off and then they get what they need. And sometimes what they need is that intimacy, is maybe that escape. Maybe they just want, um, maybe, yeah, and maybe it is to get their rocks off, right? But it looks different to everyone. So it's been, it's definitely been a journey exploring and seeing and getting to know what, you know, people are looking for in terms of, um, in, t in terms of intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. All the preview that anyone's going to get today. So <laughs> I think it's really lovely for, for everyone to see you being you 
like rather than you talking directly to them yeah. that, that you're talking to me it's it's different oh it's so awesome so guys we are going to go um but i'm going to be sharing more about this on my facebook too um lots of these answers to these types of questions and uh, i will definitely be posting up the whole podcast interview and in, uh, when it's released next year exciting 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 thanks for everyone for watching